When you think of it, there's endless Christmas trees out here. You want to see it? Well, go over there and look at it. If you want it, then I'll come over there. He would pick a dead one if he has to. In the heart of the Alaskan wilderness, where the unforgiving tundra stretches as far as the eye can see, there lived a couple far from the convenience of modern life. Haimo and Edna Korth carved out a life of solitude, self-reliance, and unwavering love in one of the harshest environments on Earth. The show The Last Alaskans brought it to our screens to show us how they live in the Alaskan wilderness. From their early days of homesteading to the tragic events that would forever alter their lives, fans have found their story a testament to the strong human spirit and the sacrifices made in the pursuit of a unique existence. But there is much more to them besides the inspiring events. They have faced tragic incidents that can change the entire way of human lives. Let's get into their life story to know the tragic life of Haimo and Edna Korth from The Last Alaskan. <coughs> right here. Don't go shaking them, gee whiz. See, grandma, 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 grandma. Yeah, right. Oh, grandma. It does look nice, Mom. I got the biggest Give me present. Paimo and Edna Korth are American outdoorsmen and survivalists who live off the grid in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge in Alaska. They are among the few permanent residents of the refuge, and their way of life is a testament to their resilience and self-reliance. Haimo was born to Irene and Eric Korth in Germany in 1955 and immigrated to the United States with his family when he was a child. He grew up in Wisconsin and Minnesota and developed a love for the outdoors at a young age. He learned how to hunt, fish, and trap from his father and grandfather and spent many hours exploring the woods and lakes near his home. Edna was born in Alaska in 1958 and grew up in a small village in the bush. Her parents and grandparents were from the Yupik clan and named her Mitty Dowin. Moreover, they were subsistence hunters and trappers, and Edna learned how to live off the land from a young age. She learned how to track animals, set traps, then skin and butcher game. She also learned how to gather wild plants for food and medicine. Her uncle, Jackson Mokiak, was an expert in trapping foxes. He was the one who helped her learn how to prepare furs, as well as make accurate cuts. Edna knew what to do so that her hair would not be damaged. She also learned how to care for the fur once the animal had been skinned. Haimo's childhood joy was exploring the woods alone, and he continued to pursue his adventurous spirit as he grew older. He eventually left his small hometown of Appleton in search of something more, which led him to the Northwest Territories of Canada, where he found work assisting a hunter guide. The job may not have been the best, but it sustained him for several months, until he decided to take the next big step and move to Alaska. Little did he know that his Alaskan adventure wouldn't be a walk in the park. Arriving in Alaska, Haimo was fortunate to stay in a mountain cabin provided by his former boss in Canada. It was a generous gesture that helped the 18-year-old tenderfoot settle in. However, the harsh Alaskan winter, lost food supplies, and even a terrifying fall through the ice quickly made it clear that his adventure was far from easy. Facing uncertainty, Haimo reached out to his former boss, who not only responded with a $500 check, but also presented him with two options – buy more supplies, or return to work on St. Lawrence Island in the Bering Sea. Given the tough circumstances he was in, it's not hard to understand why Haimo chose the latter. Haimo temporarily set up the Savunga village on St. Lawrence Island where he crossed paths with Edna. Before she started dating Haimo, Edna was involved with two other men. The first was a Swedish biologist to whom she was engaged. They were engaged with two children at the time he got into a tragic accident. In a plane crash, he lost his life, leaving behind two kids, Melinda and Merlin. The former was born in December 1977 and is 42 at the moment. Edna was a mess after the loss of her fiancé. According to her uncle, the next man she dated did not treat her well at all. He could not even stay faithful. This is one reason why her uncle was reluctant to let her date Haimo until he was sure they were a good fit. However, Edna and Haimo developed a romantic connection, which eventually led to their marriage. The couple moved to Haimo's newly built cabin in the remote North Slope region of Alaska, just before the Arctic Refuge was officially established. In their early days, they were marked by primitive living conditions. Haimo confessed that, as a young man back then, he hadn't paid much attention to the rather shabby state of the house, which didn't sit well with Edna. However, they worked together to make repairs and prepare for their first winter in their new home. In 1982, they welcomed their first daughter, Colleen Ann, but the joy of her birth was tragically overshadowed by a devastating event. In mid-1984, Colleen was swept away by the river when their canoe capsized during a trip. 
Her body was never recovered, and a memorial in her honor now stands near the Colleen River, which they had named after their beloved daughter. Even after four decades, Haimo and Edna continue to hold Colleen close to their hearts, their eyes still filled with tears when they remember their loss. Their determination to maintain their lifestyle, despite the painful memories, is truly admirable. They have now lived in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge for over 30 years and have become an integral part of the wilderness community. Moreover, they are respected for their knowledge and skills. They are also role models for those who are interested in living a simple, self-reliant life. Haimo and Edna Korth were approached by the producers of The Last Alaskans in 2014. The producers were looking for families who lived off the grid in Alaska, and they were particularly interested in Haimo and Edna because of their unique lifestyle and their deep connection to the wilderness. They were hesitant at first to participate in the show and were concerned that it would disrupt their way of life and that it would portray them in an inaccurate way. However, after meeting with the producers and learning more about their goals, Haimo and Edna decided to give it a try. The Last Alaskans premiered on the Discovery Channel in 2015, and it quickly became a popular show. Viewers were fascinated by Haimo and Edna's lifestyle, and they admitted their resilience and self-reliance. The show also helped to raise awareness of the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge and the importance of protecting Alaska's wild places. The couple have been appearing on The Last Alaskans ever since. They have shared their story with millions of viewers around the world, and they have inspired many people to appreciate the beauty and ruggedness of the Alaskan wilderness. People love the Korths because they are warm and authentic people. They are genuine and down-to-earth, and they're easy to connect with. Viewers appreciate their honesty and their willingness to share their story. Life in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge is not easy. The winters are long and cold, and the summers can be short and unpredictable. The weather can change quickly, and blizzards and other extreme weather events are common. The Korths also have to contend with wild animals, such as bears, wolves, and moose. Despite the challenges, Haimo and Edna Korth love their life in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. They feel a deep connection to the wilderness and always appreciate the beauty and tranquility of their surroundings. They also enjoy the freedom and independence that comes with living off the grid. The Korths hunt fish and trap their food. They also gather wild plants for berries, vegetables, and medicinal purposes. They have a variety of hunting and fishing techniques, and they are skilled at butchering and preserving their food. The Korths live in cabins that they build themselves. They use local materials such as logs and spruce boughs to construct their cabins. They also have a variety of tools and equipment to help them maintain their cabins and keep them warm in the winter. They use a variety of transportation methods depending on the season and the terrain. They also use snowmobiles in the winter and use boats and ATVs in the summer. They also have a team of sled dogs that they use for transportation and hunting. The Korths are part of a small community of people who live off the grid in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. They help out and support each other in times of need. They also share their knowledge and skills with each other. Despite everything, Haimo and Edna have shown that it is possible to live in harmony with the wilderness, and they have inspired others to appreciate the beauty and fragility of the natural world. Due to their passion to live in Alaskan wilderness and show it to the world, the viewership of The Last Alaskans has varied over the course of its four seasons. The first season averaged 1.2 million viewers, the second season averaged 1.5 million viewers, the third season averaged 1.8 million viewers, and the fourth season averaged 2.1 million viewers. The show has been successful in terms of its viewership, and it has also been praised by critics for its authenticity and its portrayal of the challenges of living in the Alaskan wilderness. The Last Alaskans has been nominated for several awards, including the Critics' Choice Documentary Award for Best Ongoing Documentary Series and the Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Unstructured Reality Program. The show has also been a commercial success for Discovery Channel. It's one of the network's most popular shows, and it has helped to increase Discovery's ratings among younger viewers. Besides the perks that Alaskan life has given them, the couple have faced a number of tragedies during their time on The Last Alaskans. In 2016, Haimo Korth fell while working on the roof of his cabin. He was installing new shingles when he lost his balance and fell to the ground. He landed on his back and broke his pelvis and several ribs. He was in a lot of pain and he could barely move, but he was able to crawl to his radio and call for help. However, it took several hours for rescuers to arrive due to the remote location of his cabin. When rescuers arrived, they found Haimo lying on the ground in the cold and snow. He was hypothermic and in shock. Rescuers airlifted him to a hospital in Fairbanks where he was treated for his injuries. He spent several weeks in the hospital recovering and had to undergo surgery to repair his broken pelvis as he needed physical therapy to regain his strength. 
Luckily, he was eventually able to return to his cabin, but it took him several months to fully recover from his fall. Haimo's fall was a serious incident, but he was fortunate to survive. He was a tough and resilient man and made a comeback living his life in the wilderness. The family were still processing the fall of Haimo, but Colleen, the sister of Edna Korth, drowned in the Yukon River in 2017. She was a frequent visitor to the Korth's cabin, and she was a close friend of their daughters, Rio and Rhonda. Colleen was an experienced outdoors woman, and she was familiar with the Yukon River. However, on the day of her death, the river was running high and fast. She was fishing on the bank of the river when she slipped and fell into the water. She was unable to swim, and she was swept away by the current. Rescuers searched for Colleen for several days, but her body was never found. Her death was a devastating loss for the courts and their family. The courts have spoken about Colleen's death in interviews and on their show, The Last Alaskans. They've said that Colleen was a kind and loving person, and that she was always willing to help others. They have also said that Colleen's death is a reminder of the dangers of living in the wilderness. However, the courts came together to support each other through this difficult time and showed that it is possible to overcome even the most devastating losses. Later in 2019, Haimo and Edna Korth's cabin was destroyed by a fire. The fire started in the chimney and spread quickly. It was a cold winter day, and Haimo was out chopping firewood when he saw smoke coming from the chimney. He ran back to the cabin and found that it was on fire. He and Edna tried to put it out, but it was too late. The fire spread quickly and engulfed the cabin. They were able to escape the fire with their dogs and a few belongings. However, they lost everything else in the fire. They lost their furniture, their clothes, their tools, and their supplies. They also lost their hunting and fishing equipment. The Korths were devastated by the fire. They had lived in their cabin for over 30 years, and it was more than just a home to them. It was also their livelihood. They used their cabin as a base for their hunting, fishing, and trapping activities. They were forced to move into a tent while they rebuilt their cabin. They received help from friends, family, and the community. Moreover, they received donations from viewers of their show too. It took the course several months to rebuild their cabin, and they used local materials such as logs and spruce boughs to construct their new cabin. They also had to buy new furniture, clothes, tools, and supplies. Though the new cabin is smaller than their old cabin, it is just as cozy and comfortable. The couple, along with the family, was happy to be back in their home, and they are grateful for the support they have received from the community. In one episode of The Last Alaskans, Haimo was attacked by a bear he was hunting alone. The bear was startled and suddenly charged at him. He tried to scare the bear away by yelling and waving his arms, but it was of no use. The bear knocked him to the ground and began to attack him. However, Haimo managed to fight back, but he was no match for the bear's strength. The bear bit him on the arm and leg, and it clawed at his face. Haimo was bleeding profusely, and he was close to losing consciousness. Just when it seemed like the bear was going to kill him, Haimo was able to reach for his hunting knife and stab the bear in the eye. The bear roared in pain and released Haimo. Haimo scrambled to his feet and ran for his life. Well, he managed to make it back to his cabin where Edna was waiting for him. Edna was horrified to see how badly Haimo was injured. She quickly cleaned and bandaged his wounds and then gave him some pain medication. Haimo was very lucky to have survived the bear attack. After that, he needed several weeks to recover from his injuries, but he eventually made a full recovery. In another episode, Edna broke a leg due to a fall while she was gathering firewood. Haimo was able to build a makeshift stretcher out of branches and leaves, and he carried Edna back to their cabin. The next day, Haimo used their boat to take Edna to the nearest town, where she received medical attention. Edna's leg was broken in two places, and she had to have surgery. She spent several weeks in the hospital recovering before she was able to return home. Later, Haimo began experiencing chest pains and difficulty breathing while he was out hunting. He was able to make his way back to the cabin, where Edna called for help using a satellite phone. Haimo was airlifted to a hospital where he was diagnosed with pneumonia. He was treated with antibiotics and spent several days in the hospital before he was able to return home. Edna and Haimo were checking their trap line on a snowy day. Edna walked ahead of Haimo when she saw a fox track. She followed the track for a while, but then she realized that she was lost. She couldn't see Haimo anywhere, and she didn't know how to get back to the cabin. She tried to stay calm and assess the situation, and knew that she needed to find shelter before nightfall. She spotted a small cave in the distance and made her way towards it. The cave was small and cramped, but it was dry. Edna curled up into a ball and tried to stay warm. She was scared and alone, but she knew that she needed to stay strong. The next morning, Edna woke up and started to look for a way out of the cave. She found a small opening and climbed out. 
She didn't know where she was, but she was determined to find her way back to Haimo. She started walking in the direction that she thought the cabin was. She walked for hours but didn't see any familiar landmarks. Finally, she was starting to lose hope when she heard a noise in the distance. Edna followed the noise and found Haimo. He was sitting on a rock, and he was very weak. He told Edna that he had been hypothermic and exhausted. Edna held Haimo back to the cabin, and they were both relieved to be reunited. The experience of being separated in the wilderness was a harrowing one for the couple, but it also showed their strength, resilience, and love for each other. Besides the challenges, the family have shared many sweet moments on the show. In one episode, Haimo and Edna celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary in a very special way. They built a fire in the wilderness and shared a romantic picnic. They also reflected on their life journey together and their love for each other. In another episode, Haimo and Edna's daughters Rhonda and Kryn visited them in the wilderness. The family spent their time together doing fishing, hunting, and exploring the wilderness. They also shared stories and laughs. Haimo is a skilled outdoorsman, and he loves to teach his grandchildren about fishing and hunting. He's taught them how to track animals, set traps, and cast a line. The grandchildren are always eager to learn from their grandfather, and they love spending time with him in the wilderness. Besides this, Edna is a skilled cook, and she loves to cook special meals for her family. In one episode, she cooked a Thanksgiving dinner for her family and friends. She prepared a delicious feast, and everyone enjoyed spending time together. The Korth family is always willing to help their neighbors in need. In one episode, a neighbor's cabin caught fire. They were the first to respond, and they helped to put out the fire and save the cabin. The neighbor was grateful for the Korth family's help, and it showed the strong bond that the community has. Haimo and Edna have lived a unique life in the Alaskan wilderness. They have faced many challenges, but they have always had each other to rely on. In one episode, Haimo and Edna reflected on their life together and their love for each other. It was a touching moment, and it showed how much they cherished their relationship. In addition to starring in The Last Alaskans, Haimo and Edna Korth also make a living through a variety of other means. Haimo has written two books about his experiences living in the Alaskan wilderness, The Final Frontiersman and Living Off the Grid. Edna has also written a book, The Last Alaskans Cookbook, which features recipes for meals that can be prepared using ingredients that are readily available in the wilderness. Both of them are popular public speakers, and they frequently give talks about their life in the Alaskan wilderness. They also share their knowledge of survival skills and wilderness living. Besides this, Haimo and Edna offer guided tours of the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. This is a great way for people to experience the beauty of the refuge and learn more about its wildlife and ecosystem. Haimo also traps fur-bearing animals such as foxes and marten. This is a traditional way of life for many Alaskans, and it provides a source of income for Haimo and Edna. In addition to these specific activities, Haimo and Edna also generate income through their online presence. They have a popular website and social media accounts, where they share photos, videos, and stories about their life in the wilderness. They also sell merchandise such as t-shirts, hats, and books through their websites. The couple has also appeared on other shows like Flying Wild Alaska, which is a reality show that follows the pilots of Era Alaska, which is an airline that serves remote villages in Alaska. Haimo and Edna appeared in one episode of the show, in which they were flown to a remote village to pick up supplies. In addition to this, Haimo's Arctic Refuge is a documentary about Haimo's life in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. The film follows Haimo as he goes about his daily routine, which includes hunting, fishing, and trapping. Edna also appears in the film, and she provides insights into their relationship and their life in the wilderness. Another one named Braving Alaska is a documentary about the people who live in remote villages in Alaska. Haimo and Edna appeared in one episode of the show, in which they talked about their experiences living off the grid in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. The combined net worth of Haimo and Edna Korth is estimated to be around $180,000 as of 2023. This includes their earnings from the reality shows, book sales, public speaking, tour guiding, trapping, and their online presence. They are not particularly wealthy, however, they are content with their simple lifestyle, and they are grateful for the opportunities that they've had. Haimo and Edna Korth are still living in their cabin in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge as of 2023. They're both healthy and doing well. However, talking about the Korth's daughters, Rhonda and Kryn, Rhonda is married and has two children of her own. She lives in Fairbanks, Alaska, where she works as a nurse. Kryn is also married and has two children. She lives in Wasilla, Alaska, where she works as a teacher. Haimo and Edna are very close to their daughters and grandchildren. They visit each other often, and they enjoy spending time together in the wilderness. In addition to their daughters and grandchildren, the couple also have a close relationship with the other families who live in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. 
They support each other and help each other out in times of need. The Korths are a loving and supportive family. They're also strong advocates for the Alaskan wilderness and the people who live there. The show is still on and its fourth season is airing on the Discovery Channel, which means that Haimo and Enda are not going to retire from showing the world how rugged life could actually be.